look at this. This is like cost three hundred baht, which means like this guy work for like eight eight hours a day. Just for that. Just for that. I'm pretty sure like the guy who work here, they don't buy this. Welcome to Bangkok, a melting pot of diverse people, food, and culture. Today we're joined by Om, a local living on the west side of Bangkok. Far away from the tourist markets, we get a chance to visit and see what life is really like for locals in Bangkok. From visiting the local temple where Om became a monk, to seeing locals working in the flower market just so that they can earn $10 a day. Join us in this night tour of Bangkok, Thailand like you've never seen before. Welcome the, the temple in Thailand. People don't come in this type of like, temple. The reason why people don't really come in this type of temple because one thing is not really famous and most people like this want to go to like somewhere like very famous one, yeah. right? But I created this tour because um, I would like to show like the people that's actually like the function of the temple uh -huh. in Thailand is. So the function of the temple in Thailand must be this order. That's for like the Cremation. So when I first born, my parents took me inside the temple, and then I met the senior monk, and then the senior monk quit my hair, yeah, and then give me the breast, wish me like their good fortune. In local temple, there's a prayers you can do like the ordination hall, and also it must be there's a prayers for like the school, the school to school. study for yeah. free. So it's like public school, one to six. Yeah, temple is like a community center. And then we expand from the temple. And after that, when I turned 21 years old, one time in your life, you know, right. be a monk. Yeah. Do you know why we have to be a monk? No. We actually did that to dedicate to our parents. If you have a son, one time in your life, your son become a monk. After you pass away, you can go to the heavens. Like, follow me for a little bit. Yeah. I'll show you this. This like their secret door. The people like to come and make a wish. What would you would do, right? Go pray like this, uh -huh. and then slowly, you put your forehead here, and then you make the your wish come true. For example, like, oh, my friends, my, you know, my families are around here. Uh -huh. I booked the one that's Next to them. still like empty. Yeah. So it's, it's cost about like 70 US dollar to 80 US dollar when I pass away. Mm -hmm. That's my press forever. Oh. It's just like a booking.com, Airbnb, <laughs> Agoders. But it's just the last one, you know? And then the money will go to the temple. Of course, like the, the, temple. Uh, the monk receive the money, right? Mm -hmm. And then that money will go back to the community. For example, like uh, the kids' school need like some equi like school mm -hmm. equipment or something. Or people who don't have food to eat, and then we can spare that. We have one, send that. So today we are doing a guided tour with a local that actually lives in this area and our first stop is his local temple that we stopped off at. And what I love about this is that, you know, you're, you're not going to one of the famous Grand Palace temples, you're actually seeing the local community here in this area of Bangkok and actually seeing what the temple is really being used for and it's amazing to actually walk with him and him tell his stories. Before that, I was just, I loved visiting temples just for the fact, for the reason that they're so beautiful here. So we're gonna head out now to uh, dinner. See like how we share this part for a ceremony. Yeah. Over there, monastery. Monastery, where monks, yeah. monastery, where monks stay. And from here, around here, this is like the local. But the properties belong to the temple. We don't, this is like not the private properties. Okay. But, but they live here. For it's ages. like their home. For ages. Beautiful little streets. And so quiet, so peaceful. Yeah, so like what I, I usually say, like they're my backyard. Uh -huh is the temple and then my front yard is the canal because wow. like the canal and boat were back then it was like the main transportation when the people move from the water to the land life change because car became more like a status a oh, status thing now yeah one thing like we don't really have sense of direction <laughs> we used direction. to live on the water before. <laughs> we just go awesome. by like what temple nearby uh, I really, really love this like local community vibe. It's so peaceful. Everybody knows each other. He's just walking through the streets and saying hello to everybody like he knows each other. This place is like the more 
it, the press like belong to their temple. Yeah. So around here, people like forgive forgiveness press. Uh -huh. So we don't fish here. All right. So, so this what? one is called Yadong. In Thailand, it's we call Yadong, right? Yeah, dong. Yeah means like medicine. Dong means like something that you like you preserve it like uh, for long time. So we like to say like oh we don't we don't drink alcohol, we don't drink whiskey. We are drinking we taking some medicines. Good for health. Take dip this with the chili because we love spicy. And then cheers. Then you get after this in your mouth. That is strong. It's good, right? After this, like, yeah, so bye. All of a sudden, my whole body's really warm. So, guys, the sun is finally setting. We're finishing up dinner here at um, a restaurant right across from the temple that we were just at. And Om is doing an amazing job explaining all these foods. He's picking out all the local Thai dishes that we as foreigners don't really experience because we all we always know about you know Pad Thai, of course. But these are the local dishes that we, we would have never thought of ordering, which is amazing. And we have this beautiful view of the river right behind me, guys, with the boats going by uh, every couple minutes. And and uh, it's just nothing but locals here in this area. And he pretty much knows like all the people here because he's been living here for years. He's been interacting with the community. He's been a monk in this community itself. So this is this store is just the start of the tour. And it's just off to a great start. And uh, we've, we've had a few of those whiskey shots. <laughs> My God. So the reason there's so many fish in the water, as you guys can see, is because they're not allowed to fish near the temple. So the fish has gotten really smart not to swim down river where all the fishermen are going to fish them. So they just stay around this area where they know they're going to get fed, get fat, and live the rest of their life. Here we go guys, our third stop of the night. Over there, there's a big stupas, the white one. You know what, like the stupa or pagodas functions. It's like a, like a tomb, sorry, tomb, like a tomb yeah. to keep like the Buddha lyrics inside or someone's important lyrics inside. So with the last temple we were at was very local within his community, but we arrived at a more uh, prominent area of where uh, tourists usually come to see and this is more famous, I think. But if you don't know, these are actually housing the relics of, uh, I guess, past monks and uh, important people. And it is just absolutely gorgeous, even at night. You know, you know one thing I've learned traveling the world is that if there's a lot of locals, that means it's good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which is like this best. Exactly. Yeah. In Thailand, right? We like to put this egg to the pork, make the pork softer. And after that, we put it in the pot. pot. So we've arrived at a local vendor stand right along the street, literally bringing me back to Vietnam days and Indonesia where you just pull up a chair, one of these blue little small chairs with a table here and they bring out some local food here. It looks so good. We're, we're cooking up some shabu shabu right now. Uh, we've got some pork in there, we've got some egg and uh, lots of vegetables and gonna try it out with some beer and ice inside. Literally Vietnam all over again. But you know what, like the, a lot of people ask me, right? Why Thai people like, you know, still eat like the hot soup? Because Thailand is hot, right? Hot. But I think like when we eat like hot and spicy, break us the sweat, and then I feel like we, are, we get cooler. So we got some pork in here, some broth. It's really good. I love, I love it, yeah. It's really light. A little bit of salt, sodium, MSG, you can taste it. Oh wow. And then you can add, if you want, you can add some uh, hot sauce into it. So really quick guys, um, when we were in Chiang Mai and really any city here in Thailand, 
you when you're walking around you'll notice that there'll be some locals here especially like the older ladies they'll be walking around with um, what looks like a suitcase around their neck and they'll have it strapped around and they'll have what looks like lottery tickets or pieces of paper hanging and they're trying to sell it to uh, locals really anybody and they have the same thing in Vietnam I noticed too but how does it actually work so I'm gonna ask him here well, so what has it work so there are two times a month every like first and the 16 of every month there are six numbers the biggest uh, the biggest reward was like six million born. The things like very interesting about the before a day a day before, for example, like 31st or 30th or 15th, the people who go to scratch the tree, the big tree, the yeah. like a Ben Yen tree, right? Uh -huh. To find a lucky number, trying to scratch the tree, try to get the lucky number, and then we try to bet on it. If we get a lucky, we're gonna be billionaires, oh, wow. millionaire. Billionaire. How much are the tickets? Uh, a hundred baht. A hundred baht for one ticket. For one ticket, and then, but also, like, I feel like, to be honest, I feel like when the country, like, we have to rely on the lottery, which means the economy is so bad. A lot of people, like, they came from, like, northeast of Thailand to Bangkok to do the, to sell this two times a month. So they get the money and then they go back home because, like, living costs in Bangkok is, like, too expensive. Yeah. 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 So each time they would earn maybe, like, I'm not sure, sometimes they would earn like a couple, couple hundred US dollars, 6,000 baht. So basically like two times they came to Bangkok, a few days, they get about like 12,000 baht mm -hmm. to survive for another 20, 25 days. Yeah. You can do that too. Really? You know what you can do, right? You can buy and then you can leave it with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> Guys, we've come to a local street food market right underneath the bridge, as you can see right above me here. We're gonna find some dessert. In Thailand, we put some coconut, some shim, the dry shim, and egg yolk. The red one over there is egg yolk. And some onion. It, it looks weird, right? Yeah. Why do you wanna eat like egg yolk with the shim, and coconut, and then some sugar? Sweet somehow, which makes no sense, but it's a mix of sweet and salty at the same time. It's incredible, and it's a taco. We're walking right now over across the street to another egg yolk vendor, and we're gonna put it on ice cream. On ice cream, yep. See, put it here. They work so quickly. <laughs> I know, right? It's magic. How much does one of these cost? It's 40 baht, $1.20. Yeah, $1.20. <laughs> That's very different. We're on the way to our last stop here. Ice cream with egg on it and corn. Literally, ice cream with egg and corn. I never would have thought I would enjoy that. Man. Thailand, you think of the most insane ingredients and you mix them together. Alright guys, we've just arrived at the flower market here in Bangkok. Fun fact, this place never closes. It is almost 9 o'clock here at night. It's still open and it'll stay open until tomorrow morning. And we're about to see how the flowers are made and go through the entire market where they're selling flowers all night long. This looks like an alley we're not supposed to be in almost, right? It's like mostly like the people like would go like the main entrance, right? But yeah. I would like to take you here to see like the, you see that girls over there, right? Yeah. So it's just doing like their, you know like betel nut? Mm -hmm. Betel nut. Things like you're chilling and then you get the DC, get you high. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's not that good high. Yeah. Yeah. Back then, the, like you know like the, the older people in Thailand and our ancestors, they do this. but. Right now in Thailand, the, the local don't do it anymore. This this one became uh, offering stuff to their ancestors. You know, before COVID, it was like 
it was quite busy. very busy around here, but not anymore. The flower market in here, yeah, like you said before, like open 24 hours, and the most like famous flowers, like five things: jasmine flowers, marigold, roses, and some love flowers. The love flowers like look like they look like a bell shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It looked like no, it looked like a popcorn actually. <laughs> yeah, you okay. see that it looked like a popcorn. And then the orchid flowers. It's so quiet here yeah. now. Yeah, it's super quiet. What's the busiest time? Uh the busiest time is like uh between early in the morning. Because I would say like the flowers around here is like more than eighty percent of the flowers here for offerings. Oh, okay. Um and then for like some ceremony. Yeah. It's just like only like well, maybe next 10 days we will be busy because of Valentine's. So typically, like how much are the offerings costing? This one's like the offering, this one is quite expensive because like they have to decorate. I would say like this one costs about like two or three hundred baht, 10 US doll. And mostly like the, the workers around here, they came from like Cambodia and Burma. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. They work for like the minimum wage is about like 300 baht a day, 8 Three, hours. 300 baht a day? 10 US dollar a day. Wow. I would honestly never imagine locals here working for 300 baht a day. That is pretty crazy. I mean that's, that's like an hour wage in the US. Just imagine that. Can you believe this guys that all this back here this isn't even how busy it typically is this is during COVID and this is like a half capacity this used to be a lot busier here uh, before COVID but now of course everything's a little bit cheaper there's less people there's less people doing offerings all the marigolds you see back there are for offerings in the temples but not that many people are buying them right now because not a lot of them are going out. Coming out here at night, middle of the night, at 9 o'clock at night, to see all these people working literally day and night for this, just for minimum wage of 300 baht. All right guys, we're finishing off at the flower market here with Om. He has been an awesome guy to show me around, all around Bangkok, the local stuff that I would have never been able to find without him. So if you guys ever want to come out here to Bangkok, see the local side, not the touristy stuff, the temples that you all see on your own on Instagram, come check this guy out. I'll put his WhatsApp info down below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like, comment down below any questions, and check him out. And I'll see you next time. Thank Bye. you.